Hi, this is Brett. I would like to basically show you the tutorial for the new Cruncher plugin, polygon reduction uh, plugin that runs inside Unity. Once you get the package downloaded from the asset store, you're going to have all the files here in the import window, like always. You just import that, and that's going to bring into your project two folders. The first folder is going to be the Cruncher plugin folder. And this folder you could rename and put it kind of wherever you want. Inside here will be the manual, tutorial, version history, and the documentation. There's some editor scripts. There's some runtime scripts. There's a scene, the tutorial scene, which we'll be going through, we'll be building today. And there'll be test models in this dinosaur. Before I get to that, though, I'd really like to just talk about the plugins folder. This folder you cannot rename. It's required to be called plugins in order for Unity to be able to find it. And you can't really move it or nest it anywhere else. So this one, you're going to have to leave where it is. If you have other plugins, it's okay. Mine will sit alongside um, the ones that are already in there. And I've prefixed them um, with the Cruncher plugin name to be sure that they don't um, collide with anything you already have. Okay, so let's get started. So what we'll do is we're going to open up our tutorial scene. And in that tutorial scene, you're going to find this dinosaur here. This dinosaur is something that um, I exported out of Poser. And I think that one of the common uses of Cruncher will be for DAS3D, Poser, and other content that's bought online, as well as just optimizing stuff that your um, art team might have uh, made for you. But I thought this would be a pretty good test. This dinosaur is not particularly optimized. It's about... Um, 28,000 verts, uh, almost 50,000 triangles. It's got sub meshes, um, UV coordinates, skins, everything. So it's not the most optimized thing in the world and it's using uh, more materials than it needs. It has um, a transparent eye color, but I left it all just kind of the way it was because I think it's nice if this matches um, what you might actually find on something of your own. Okay, so I've got my dinosaur here in the scene and I've uh, put in a walk animation and it plays automatically. If we go ahead and just run this by default because it's all at zero, 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 it's facing forward so I'm looking at its butt, but if I go into scene I can look at it here and I can watch it animate while it's doing it. So yep, pretty good, um, decent model, but let's see if we can uh, improve that a bit. So there's a few ways that you can get started using Cruncher. You'll see that there's a menu up here the basic concept is all you need to do is convert um, a selected object. Now you can actually select <clears throat> the root model itself or in this case I actually have a uh, instance. It's what's called a model instance. Unity supports different kinds of assets uh, and I basically support all of the standard prefab or model asset types. So that would be uh, user asset, um, model asset, model instance, um, user instance, prefab instance, stuff like that. At the moment we don't support trees and terrains, uh, but I plan to add that support later on. So let's get started. So basically what I've done is I've taken the dinosaur, I drug it out into the scene, and as we can see we have the normal more high polygon um, thing there. If I click on the hip bone, that would be the root of the object, I can see the materials and everything is all in here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click on the basic dinosaur and we're going to go and convert selection. Now in this screen, I've covered it before, you can commit, you can add a suffix. So basically what I need to do is generate an intermediate file, a file that you'll actually use in the scene um, and then I need to link back to your original mesh and create a new mesh. So I'm, I definitely need to add a new asset. So basically you're going to add what that is. You can create as many as you want. Like if I wanted to do an LOD, I can generate those all at once and set the different qualities for it. But for this tutorial, we're just going to create one. And you know what? We'll start off with just leaving it at full quality as well. So uh, I can do that by quality or quantity. So we'll just go ahead and leave it one. So when I convert, what it did is down here, it created a brand new asset and then it changed this one into this one so I'm no longer linked directly to this. So if I click on this now you can see we've added our Cruncher root script here and 
I can do absolute or relative modifications. And right now I can do adjust the quality or the quantity. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to live preview. Live preview means that as I make changes here, I'll be able to see it out in the world. But that doesn't mean that it will actually apply those changes. We have that apply changes button down here. Preview changes is disabled because we have a live preview. So let's go ahead and drag this down. So as I drag it down, you watch out here and you will see that you can watch the polygons actually disappearing. Now if I go all the way down to the bottom, it will leave the basic shape um, and it will try to maintain, but you can see that's, that's not very good. But if I drag it up just a little bit, even that is pretty usable. So we went from 48,924 triangles all the way down to 3,000 uh, plus. And we can make this a little bit lower. Let's get this down. Yeah, 2,000, even 2,000. Doesn't look too bad. Let's take a look at that. We spin it around. Now what's cool about this uh, plugin and with the balancer technology is that it will actually maintain detail. So even here on the teeth and others, some of these teeth have now poked through because um, we've collapsed so many triangles. So what I can do is I can actually go down to the qual the the quality, quantity, sorry, and I can actually lower this a little bit more so that we can try and get something a little bit better or I can even raise it up a little bit. So let's look at that. That doesn't look too bad. 2,000 polygons from where we were. Okay, so then when I click apply, it will then actually stick the changes into the mesh. So now when I run it, can actually go in and you can see it's actually animating and I can even um, while it's running the quality has went back to where it was but I actually can lower this down click live preview and you can actually modify this while it runs even of course it causes a small degradation so even while it's running in the editor you can find the values you like <laughs> you can even go down all the way, which actually may not even be that bad for an LOD that was quite far away from the camera. So, yeah, you can adjust that. And then when you're done, you can click Apply. Now you'll notice, though, that when you stop, the um, quantities and everything don't get updated. Uh, that's because when Unity does the... Um, uh, scene stop, it restores your state just like it would anything else. So you can modify at runtime, find the values you like, write them down, and then when you're done, then you can just use those.